the largest tropical forest in the world. The Amazon rainforest blankets more than 700 million hectares of South America. These forests teem with plant and animal life, hosting an estimated 10% of the Earth's known species. But the region is also home to more than 30 million people who live in remote communities, villages, towns, and cities in nine countries across the Amazon basin. And while the Amazon fulfills an important global role, regulating the climate and rainfall, conserving biodiversity and storing carbon, it is also a vital source of life for local people. Too often policymakers see the forest in the Amazon as an empty space, something that can be conserved. But it's a landscape filled with people, people that use the forest and depend on them. Like other tropical forests, the Amazon is threatened by climate change and deforestation. An area the size of Taiwan is lost every year, mainly due to the expansion of pastures for beef production. These changes are in some cases driven by larger scale landholders linked to global agribusinesses and the international demand for beef and soy, but smallholders have also played a role in forest conversion. Research undertaken by the Centre for International Forestry Research, C4, in collaboration with local and national partners, is helping to shed light on how the Amazon's forests can be used in more sustainable ways and improve local people's livelihoods at the same time. These are working for us. People make their livelihoods using forest products and there will be trade-offs. You need to look at the, the types of needs people have, the types of pressures that they're responding to, and then take that into account when you're thinking in, about forests or making decisions about forest policy. In Ecuador, C4 scientists are mapping the dynamics of the country's extensive domestic timber market. They're examining how smallholders and chainsaw millers participate in those markets and identifying the barriers preventing some of those people from engaging legally with the system. Para trabajar con programa necesita recurso económico. Cuesta, cuesta un valor de más o menos, creo que son como dos mil dólares para poder salir con programa. Y así como por la necesidad, hay veces nos toca cortar sin programa también. Ahí sí cortamos uno o dos arbolitos para sostener la familia. Smallholders are important actors in supplying timber to, to these markets. And you have an important number of, of local people that depend on timber for, for making a living. So whatever action that's going to be taken for the forestry sectors in these countries, they have to take into account the smallholders. In Brazil's far west, researchers are analysing the innovative low-carbon development policies being implemented by the Brazilian state of Acre, a region with a long tradition of extractivist uses of the forest, especially rubber tapping. It's really looking at rural development from a low emissions perspective, but putting the rural development first. In Acre, most deforestation now occurs on small landholdings, so a major thrust of the government's initiative involves providing farmers with incentives and assistance designed to improve local well-being and reduce pressures on forests at the same time. They include support for sustainable agriculture, fish farming, raising chickens and managing forest products like acai. <laughs> Nós temos que arrumar o meio de fazer o mesmo para o consumo, né? Nós temos precisa da mandioca, nós precisamos do feijão, precisamos do milho, precisamos do arroz. E se nós não queimássemos e não desmatássemos, nós não tínhamos como viver. Mesmo pagando de multa de Ibama, mas nós não tínhamos outra saída, não sei. 
Os frangos são mais fora-vivo, né? Então agora aí. Nós comemos um gordo, melhorou. O assado sustentável também melhorou, que diminuiu muito o serviço, né? A piscicultura também melhorou, está melhorando, né? Tudo está melhorando, né? C4 Research across the Amazon supports the use of incentives combined with command and control measures as an effective way to combat deforestation. It's important to knit together a, a policy mix that can also deliver some carrots and not only sticks vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, the strategy you use to combat deforestation. And that has a lot of power because people just can't be punished if they have no alternatives. You know, you just can't give people fines that they can't afford. Ya llega la castaña desde Pariamano, cargada la canoa, nos trae la madera. Across the nearby border, in Peru, more C4 researchers are trying to discover what impact extracting timber from Brazil nut concessions has on the production of the nuts, and so help to inform more enlightened policies that allow for sustainable multiple uses of the forest. También vemos acá las maderas también, este año he puesto a trabajar porque también necesitamos algo más para poder vivir. Lo que nosotros talamos, ¿sabes, señorita? Es donde no hay, donde no hay castaña. Así conforme, ¿no?, de que trabajen legalmente, eh, no habría problema. It's not that the forest is being cleared or there is, you know, massive uh, over-harvesting, but there's always an effect. The originality of this study is that there's no data to really inform policy yeah. or inform, you know, best practices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, regardless of uh, we have, you know, no effect, negative effect or positive effect, uh, the results are going to promote a better use. I think C4's research is important because we are going out and trying to look at these processes of development in forest landscapes from a different perspective. So it isn't just about the needs of industry. It isn't just about the needs of indigenous people or the needs of colonists or urban populations that may want to maintain a forest landscape. You have to look at the multiple demands and needs for forests. <laughs> Maloca,